The film opens with a mother and her young daughter arriving in the Alps to pick mushrooms. At some point, the girl notices an unfamiliar boy who attracts her attention with a mirror that reflects the sun's rays. He points her to a lawn full of beautiful and edible mushrooms. In the same place, the baby finds a human skeleton and screams in horror, realizing that she was on someone's grave. A little later, the police arrive at the scene and show the girl a photo of the people who disappeared here. She recognizes the boy as Albert, who disappeared in 1975. The officer does not believe this is possible and assumes that the girl saw a ghost, but the mother thinks otherwise. She decides to tell a story from 30 years ago that can shock even the most skeptical person. Village in the Alpine Mountains, 1975. Local police sheriff Sebastian Rusch runs to the church, where he finds a priest hanging from the church tower. Soon the doctor checks him and confirms that the church worker took his own life. The bishop understands that his assistant has committed a mortal sin, but proposes to break the rules and bury the priest with dignity by arranging a three-day complaint. Shortly after the funeral, a little girl draws the attention of the sheriff to a girl who has appeared in their village. She looks terrible and needs help due to impotence. Rush picks up a stranger who is lying on her feet and first of all takes her to the station to Dr. Zing. The girl shows interest in her savior and, grabbing, tries to kiss him. The doctor who arrived at the station checks the stranger and makes sure that she is dumb, but not because of a physical defect. The girl reacts strangely to the light and is ready to pounce on anyone who, in her opinion, is hostile. Zing offers to hand over the unknown to a psychiatric hospital, but Roosh refuses to do this as he wants to help her. The locals have gathered at the mayor's wife's bar where they are discussing a newly arrived girl. One of the hillbillies saw a mysterious image of a female nun in the mountains, but she ran away as soon as he called out to her. Roosh brings a stranger to the same bar to ask Teresa for some food and clothes. A woman who once loved the sheriff asks him to be careful with this girl. She considers it no coincidence that a stranger appeared in the village immediately after the priest took his own life. In addition, Teresa found a toy carved by Albert, a shepherd who lives in the mountains and assumes that something happened to him. The locals are becoming more and more aggressive towards the girl, suspecting her involvement in what is happening in the village. They are unhappy with the fact that the stranger is walking free and offer Roosh to send her to jail. It is difficult for the sheriff to ensure the safety of the girl, so he decides to lock her in a cell. Roosh trusts the girl and considers her innocent, but he need to figure out what is happening. Going to Mount Thistle, the policeman checks the shepherd's house and realizes that there is no one in it. Animals and weapons are also missing, so Roosh assumes that Albert and Irwin went hunting. When leaving, the officer does not suspect that someone was in the house and needs his help. After descending the mountain, Roosh reassures the locals and returns to the station. Here he meets a bishop who is trying to expel the devil from a girl with a crucifix. She reacts sharply to the cross and becomes wild, which indirectly confirms the words of the clergyman. Roosh is not going to believe in these nonsense and takes the girl to his house to hide from the crazy locals. After taking a few photos, he is going to find a stranger among the missing, suggesting that she has amnesia. The beauty cannot speak or write, but draws a cross, hinting at what exactly happened to her. The next morning, volunteer Martin arrives in the village to help Irwin and his mute nephew Albert, who lost his parents due to an avalanche. A city man is not used to conquering mountains, so he can hardly endure the climb and does not accept the local cuisine. Meanwhile, a stranger takes care of Rush and brings him coffee in bed, showing her sympathy. She also learns that the sheriff dreamed of becoming Teresa's husband, but she chose a wealthier mayor. Supporting the man, the stranger replaces the woman's face with her photo, showing sincerity of feelings. The mute Albert informs his uncle that a lynx has attacked their goat. 
Grabbing a gun, Erwin rushes to her aid, but the wild animal has escaped, injuring livestock. Martin worked as a doctor's assistant in the city and realizes that the animal's respiratory artery is damaged. She is suffering, so it is easier to shoot, relieving her of suffering. Erwin is unable to do so, so Martin takes matters into his own hands and breaks the goat's neck. Roche does not want to believe that the stranger and Senentunchi are the same person, because he does not believe in the existence of witches and otherworldly forces. Arriving at the archive, the man reviews the photo of the missing and finds a newspaper clipping dated 1950. Twenty-five years have passed, but the girl has not changed at all, which frightens the sheriff, but he continues to look for a logical explanation for this. Leaving the stranger with the mayor, Rouge goes to the valley to meet Commissioner Matter, who was working at the time. As it became known, the girl was considered a gypsy, but after three people burned down, she disappeared without a trace. Meanwhile, a stranger creates the image of a man out of chains and shoes, attracting the attention of the mayor. Nader is not interested, as he has a lot of work to do. As soon as he is distracted, the bishop attacks the girl, who tries to exorcise the devil and take the life of the vessel containing him. Arriving in time, the mayor protects the girl from the bishop, but she frightenedly runs away. A stranger takes refuge in Teresa's bar, but the pregnant woman believes she is Sinanthunji. Teresa threatens the girl with bread, on which she has drawn a cross, and sees that she is becoming aggressive. Martin, Irwin, and Albert drink strong alcohol to relax a bit. Considering that they lacked entertainment, the men decided to make Sinanthunji, a doll made of a broom, rags, and hay which can come to life and fulfill any desire of the one who created it. Irwin also tells the city guest the legend that in 1953 shepherds had already called Senanthunchi and she not only cooked food, but also spent the night with men, giving them happiness and pleasure. Having pronounced the spell and performed the ritual, the trinity calls Senanthunchi and, in a drunken delirium, sees a girl created from straw in front of him. Rush returns to the village and learns that Teresa has lost her child. The woman blames the girl for what happened, believing that she is a witch or the embodiment of the devil. On the morning of the funeral of baby Nader and Teresa, the bishop turns the villagers against the girl. He reports that she is the incarnation of the devil who will destroy their settlement and is also guilty of what happened to the baby. To prove the theory, the clergyman provides an article and a photograph from 25 years ago, which depicts a young gypsy woman who looks like a girl. In the morning, Albert wakes up and is frightened to notice that a girl has appeared in their house. He does not realize that this is a stranger who fled the village to hide from persecution and assumes that she is the Senanthunchi that they called last night. Martin and Irwin are also shocked and try to befriend a shy, wild, incautious stranger. Martin realizes that the girl is very real and offers to go to the village to report her before the police show up. At first, Irwin agrees, but later notices that the girl does not understand anything and behaves strangely. Showing interest in the beauty, the shepherd seduces her and then takes her by, unaware that Albert was watching what was happening. Meanwhile, Rouge calls the former sheriff and learns that he left this world as a result of a heart attack. A couple of minutes later, he receives a printout from the city stating that Martin is a wanted criminal who took the life of his girlfriend. At the same time, Martin offers Irwin to let the stranger go so that she can return to the village. The shepherd is against it, so Martin offers the girl to run away as soon as the man goes about his business. Noticing the loss of the beauty, Irwin goes after the couple, leaving Albert with a gun to guard the house. The girl is afraid and does not want to return to the village, so she runs away. Martin manages to catch her, and the couple tries to escape Irwin who is chasing them. Taking advantage of the moment, Martin takes the girl by, and then returns to the shepherd's house. He ridiculously scares Albert, causing him to shoot, and Irwin hurries back up the mountain. 
Men understand that they can share one beauty for two and decide to keep her. In the evening, they drink by the fire, and Erwin confesses that he is Albert's real father. The man believes that a stranger can become his first girlfriend. Albert is frightened and hides in the barn, as he does not know what to do with the girl. The men drink and take the beauty into the house to have love in a threesome. At some point, she tries to resist and bites Martin's hand, but this does not lead to anything good. At night, when the men are sleeping, the girl leaves, after grabbing a knife that could help get rid of the offenders. Roche wakes up from a knock on the door and meets a frightened stranger on the threshold who needs his help. Realizing that only he can save her, the sheriff decides to take the girl to another city. On his way, villagers block the way with a truck, because of which Roosh gets into an accident. The girl managed to escape, but the policeman is beaten by the mayor and other people, convinced that she is Senentunji. Early in the morning, Albert tries to wake up Erwin and Martin in order to show them a terrible picture. In the barn, men find gutted animal carcasses, realizing that the girl is not only dangerous, but also very cruel. Erwin goes hunting for a stranger, unaware that she is hiding in the same barn. Martin decides to help her and locks the beauty in a nearby building, promising to release her as soon as the shepherd leaves to find her. Rush returns home and notices a specific church symbol in the form of a cross on the wall. Remembering the drawing of the girl, he realizes that they are identical, and this is not without reason. Taking a revolver, the sheriff goes to the church and finds a secret passage to the basement, where the stranger lived all this time. Meanwhile, Martin is getting worse, as the bite caused him to become infected with blood. Erwin offers to go down to the village for medical help, but the townsman refuses and tells that he committed a terrible crime. In an attempt to help Martin, the shepherd asks Albert to fetch a bottle of alcohol. The guy goes to the shed where the girl is being held. She is afraid, and as soon as Albert comes inside, she hits him on the head. Erwin notices the girl in the barn, and after blocking the door, tries to set it on fire. The stranger gets out through a hole in the roof, but Albert can't get out. The man understands what he has done and saves his son. Albert speaks and calls him dad for the first time, after which he falls into an eternal sleep. Noticing that the girl was outside the window, the distraught Erwin pounces on her and hits her on the head with a stool. Roosh meets with the bishop and arrests him for the crime he committed. The sheriff realized that the gypsy woman in the 25-year-old photo was the mother of the girl who had been captured by the priest. He used a woman against her will, as a result of which they had a daughter. The three dead shepherds and the priest who were discovered are the work of a bishop hiding his crimes. It was he who brought the gypsy to the point that she fell off a cliff and also kept his own daughter captive, hiding her in the basement of the church. A few days ago, a girl living in isolation managed to escape when a priest brought her food. Realizing what a horror the bishop has done, Roosh arrests him and sends him to jail. The little girl tells the sheriff that she saw the girl on the mountain. Meanwhile, Erwin captures a stranger and threatens her with a cross in an attempt to exorcise the devil. Martin is getting worse, but he does not want any of the girls to suffer and protects the innocent victim. He is convinced that she is an ordinary person and demands that the shepherd let her go. Erwin does not obey and is wounded in the arm, after which he submits to Martin. Wanting to take revenge on the offender, the girl grabs a knife and takes Erwin's life. The sheriff climbs the mountain and realizes that something strange has been going on in the house. Having met a girl in love with him, Roosh drinks tea in her company. After that, the stranger offers to go to the barn, where there are dolls made from the skins and bodies of Albert, Martin, and Erwin. The girl knew the legend of the Senenthunchi and thought that this would help them return to life. Roosh is shocked and realizes that all the events that happened to the girl happened six days before their first meeting. Erwin, Martin and Albert said goodbye to life more than a week ago, and no one will know their truth. 
Ryush not only did not expect this, but is also angry with the girl. He tries to catch and arrest her, but the frightened beauty runs away. Because of the thick fog, she does not notice the danger ahead and falls off a cliff. The sheriff goes downstairs and realizes that not only this girl, but also dozens of other people said goodbye to life in this way. Feeling guilty about what happened, Ruish takes his own life. In the present, the police notice the skeleton of the same girl and realize that she was an ordinary person who became the subject of false rumors spread by the bishop to deceive people.